The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. What beckoning ghost along the moonlight shade invites my steps and points to yonder glade? Evidently, Mr. Alexander Pope sees his ghosts at night in a garden. However, each of us has his own private ghost, and every now and then it beckons us. To what unknown place shall your ghost summon you? mystery drama, The Forever Alley, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Larry Haynes and Marion Seldes. It is not as chic as tennis, nor yet as stylish as golf. But they say it has more adherence than both those games combined. I refer here, of course, to the ancient sport of skittles, which has evolved into the modern sport of bowling. Who can fail to be fascinated by the heavy ball as it careens swiftly down the glassy, smooth, and gleaming wooden lane and smashes into the head pin? Just a trifle off-center, and in the blink of an eye, none are standing. All ten are lying on their sides, some still spinning from the violence at impact. Well, bowling, as you know, is a sport. And like all such pastimes, there are those who can take it, and those who can leave it alone. Then, there are those to whom it's a religion. Please sit down, Lieutenant Mulvaney. Okay. Now then. Hold it, Doc. Now, before we go into now, then, can we go over the ground rules? The ground rules? Well, you're the official psychiatrist. You're working for the police department. I'm paid by the department. I'm working for you. For me. Well, I just suppose, after we go round and round a little bit with this thing, you should come to the conclusion that I'm... that I'm nuts. Do you report that? That's a very complicated question. All I want is a simple answer. I understand your problem. But I'm a doctor. I have an obligation to my patient. But as a public official, I have an equally important duty. Perhaps it might be best if you consulted a private psychiatrist. I did. Oh? But I can't afford it anymore. I've already been there ten times. We still haven't got past what happened to me when I was five years old. But sometimes it's vital... Now, look, Doc, what's early... bothering me right now has nothing to do with what happened when I was five. Can you be sure of that? Yes, Doc, I'm sure. What's your departmental assignment? Missing persons. Is the problem, as far as you know, job-related? Oh, yes. Yes, but it's also personal. You see, I'm trying to find a man who's reported missing. He's also my brother-in-law, my sister's husband. Yes. And he's been gone a month. Well, have you been able to make any progress at all? Now, this is where it gets difficult. Why? Well, you see, the fact is, I know where he is. You know where he is? Yeah. Then he isn't missing. Oh, no, no, he's missing, all right. He's just as missing as he, as he ever was. You'll have to explain. <sighs> Henrietta, uh, my sister, she marries a fellow named Bobby Clover. He's got a job, sells stocks and bonds. They live good, no kids, so they got plenty to spend on themselves. He's okay with money, so she's got no complaints in that department. However... Yes? He's got a sickness. What is it? Bowling. Bowling? Do you call bowling a sickness? Well, in his case... Bowling? What other game calls for such coordination, such timing? I'm only repeating what my sister tells me. It is a game of consummate skill. Kill, completely devoid of all pretension. Excuse me, Doctor, I didn't know you were a fan. Yes, I'm a fan. In the literally derived sense of the word, fan, a uh, shortening for fanatic. <laughs> Let me understand. You say your brother-in-law is missing 
Then you say you know where he is. Is that correct? Yeah. Then you add that despite the fact that you know where he is, he's still missing. You were about to expand on that. Yeah. Now, I know things weren't all that smooth between Bobby and Henrietta, but I had no idea how bad it was until... one night, somebody rings my bell. And who's standing there? But my sister, Henrietta. I have to talk to you, Joe. All right. Can I get you something? No. No, Joe, you've got to do something. About what? About Bobby. Now, Bobby's your problem, Henrietta. I never see him. Never? All day long. He's out working. Well, you can't hate him for that. But he isn't home at night either. Oh. Is there, uh, someone else? Not someone. Something. Something? Some women have to worry about a blonde. My rival is a bowling ball and ten sticks of wood. Now, look, you knew he liked bowling before you married him. To like it is one thing. To worship it is something else. Hey, that's a pretty strong word. I never see him. You still love him? Yes. Well, there's only one sure way you'll keep him. Become involved. Go bowling with him. I tried that. It doesn't work. I only embarrass him half the time the ball rolls into the gutter. Well... And when it doesn't, it kind of teeters along the edge... And then maybe it knocks over one single solitary pin. Maybe, if I'm lucky, too. My highest score is 23. 23? And I cheated. Please, Joe, talk to him. All right. What do you want me to tell him? You always know the right thing to say at the right time. I have every confidence in you. And did you go to see your brother-in-law, Lieutenant? Yes, Doctor. And what did you say to him? I went to the lanes, where he hangs out. It must have been two in the morning. The place was practically empty. I think they were getting ready to close. He was the only customer left. He was all by himself. And he was still bowling. Bobby? Oh, Joe. What are you doing here? Looking for you. I didn't know you bowled. A little, now and then. Oh, you want to roll a few frames? Uh... I think it's too late for this place, but uh, they've got some all-night alleys a little ways from here. No, uh, some other time, Bobby. Oh. Well, what can I do for you? Uh, want to stop off somewhere and have some coffee? Sure. And talk? Now, she asked you to see me, didn't she? Sure. But she's got a pretty good case, you have to admit that. I'm never home. She never sees me. We never spend time together. You don't get married to live this kind of life. Marriage is companionship. Marriage is doing things together. Marriage is sharing. Marriage is caring. Joe, I know what I'm doing isn't right. Well, if you know it isn't right, why do you keep on doing it? Because I can't help myself. Oh, come on. Come on, Bobby. I'm hooked. Do you understand? No. No. How could you understand? Here. You see this ball? This is what I live for. Watch me aim it. Watch me approach the line. Watch me release it and send it down the lane. Now, look. See it? It's a strike. You see them scatter? Look, that's what I live for. Sounds crazy, huh? Well, right now, this is the only time I feel alive. Oh, sure, I can, I can go through the motions, I can do my job, and I do it well. But everything else is just killing time. This right here, this is living. I just want to spend the rest of my life bowling. Yeah. Uh, what do you say we have that cup of coffee anyhow, huh? Sure. Uh, you got your car? I came down with some other guys, but they had to leave early. No, I'm parked right in front. Okay, uh, let me change my shoes and stuff and settle my bill. Uh, I'll meet you outside. Yeah, okay. And that's when he disappeared, Doctor. Is he a good bowler, your brother-in-law? Yeah, I suppose. Would you happen to know his average? No, I don't know. I think I heard him say something like 220. 220? Mm-hmm. That's... Tournament caliber 220? If I could bowl 220, I'd shut up shop and... <laughs> I'm about 180 myself. I think I'm getting better all the... Oh, yes. Now, no. you said... That's when he disappeared. Please explain. Well, 
All he was going to do, as I said, was uh, change his shoes, pay his bill, and meet me in the car. How long does that take? It doesn't take me more than three minutes. Yeah, sure. So uh, I go out the door, get into the car, even start up the motor. I turn on the radio, find one of those nice, easy music stations. I figure he's excited. It'll help calm him down. Maybe we can talk sensibly. So I'm uh, sitting there and sitting there. It's a couple of minutes and five minutes, ten minutes. Then I see a guy. He turns out to be the manager. He comes out, starts to lock the door. Hey, hey, hold it a second. Uh, you, wait a minute. Now, you can't lock up. Who says I can't lock up? I gotta go home and go to sleep, too. Now, just wait a minute, huh? You, you want a bowl? You get here at a decent hour. First, you make a reservation. Sometimes we got leads. I don't want a bowl. Then what are you doing here? There's still somebody inside. Oh, there ain't nobody inside. I make sure I'm the last one out. My brother-in-law is still in there. I'm trying to tell you. My brother-in-law, no Bobby Clover. Do you know Bobby Clover? <laughs> Do I know Bobby Clover? Bobby Clover is sending my kids through college. Well, he's still in and there. And it's an exaggeration, but you just give me some more customers like Bobby Clover. I tell you, Bobby's still in there. He is, huh? Oh, Look, pal. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a load on you. No, huh? but I'll tell you what I do have. I made this badge. Oh, well, you're a cop. Look, uh, is Bobby in a jam? Come on, open up. Sure, sure. Turn on the lights. Well, you can see. The joint's empty. Bobby? Bobby? Now, where could he have gone? What do you mean, where could he have gone? This is it. Over there beside that uh, glass wall. You know, right behind it, we got the coffee shop. Those two doors are the restrooms. That door is my office. All right, let's look. Look, look where? Before, before I close, I always double check everything out. Well, let's do it again. Well, you satisfied? There's nobody here. There's no way out except through the front doors, right? This is it. Yeah, you win, and I remember he said to me, I'll change shoes and settle up. Wait for me in the car. Now, there was nobody else in the place. Everyone had already gone. Now, remember, you were sitting there at the counter reading a paper. A magazine. And I went out. Now, what did you see? What did you hear? Bobby sings out, hey, Fred, what do I owe you? Let's settle up. So I told her the tab. Now, I see I don't have any more receipts left in the book. Hey, Bobby, I say, I got to go in an office for a second and get a new receipt book. Yeah. Well, that's what I do. I go into the office. I pick up a receipt book, and I'm on my way out again when the phone rings. It's the wife. Hey, Fred, she says, bring me home a quart of chocolate ice cream. And I says, hey, Ruthie, how are you going to lose weight, huh? How long were you on the phone? With Ruthie? That's my wife. It's one, two, three. Oh, how long go by? How long would you estimate? 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds. A minute top. All right, all right. And then? Well, then I pick up the receipt book and come out, and he's gone. Bobby's gone. How could he be gone? He's gone. G-O-N-E, gone. Look, didn't it strike you as strange? He said he wanted to settle up, and then when you came out, he was gone. So what? I think he's in a hurry. It can wait till tomorrow. I assume he just left. Well, it's impossible for him to just walk out of this place without my seeing him. There's only one exit, right? Right. And I'm parked directly in front of your door. You are? So you tell me, how could he leave without my seeing him? How could he? Come on, answer my question. Hey, Lieutenant. What do you want from me? It's a question we hear quite often. And what can we want from poor Fred, the manager? At any rate, let us review. Do we have all the elements? There is only one way out of the bowling alley, and Lieutenant Joe Mulvaney had it covered. There's no place to hide in the bowling alley, and the place has been thoroughly searched. So, what are we to assume? Well, we can safely assume that we shall all meet here for the second act. stone, and ye shall find me. Cleave the wood, and there I am. Yes, if only it were that simple. Bobby Clover was sitting in a large, bright bowling alley, and suddenly, mysteriously, unaccountably, he just disappeared. 
there is absolutely no place to hide. And even if there were, there's no way he could get there without being seen. What's to be done? Right now, all we can do is support that arm of our local police department that's concerned with it. Lieutenant Mulvaney, a man cannot simply vanish into thin air. Oh, come on, Doctor. You have to do better than that. A man obviously did. I'm not a police detective, but... Yeah? It would seem to me that somehow... The man, this brother-in-law of yours... Was able to make his way out of the building undetected. Now, Doctor, I explained to you there was only one exit and I was watching it. A rear window? All the windows were locked from the inside. The cellar? There is no cellar, no basement. The place rests on a concrete slab. The room for utilities, the heat, air conditioning? All that is in a metal shed attached to the outside of the building. Very well, Lieutenant. Then there must be some secret door or panel or passageway. No, 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 no. We played that game, too. I got guys in from loft and burglary. You couldn't hide a mouse in the floor, the walls, the ceiling. These guys would spot it. No, they checked out every square, or I ought to say every cubic inch of the premises. But suppose... <laughs> I'm not trying to do your work for you, but... Suppose the manager, Fred... Suppose he had wanted to... Murder your brother-in-law. No, a homicide's already been there. First, he would need a motive, and they couldn't find one. Besides, why would Fred kill his best customer? We are exploring possibilities. Sure, we're also clutching at straws, Doctor, but go on, go on with it. Now, say Fred killed him. How did Fred dispose of the body? Huh? Now, Bobby Clover is six feet tall, weighs 190. What do you do with him? There's no place to hide him, no way to make him disappear. I mean, you might think of ways to reduce Bobby's body to nothing, but they'd all require two things. A, Fred did not have time, and B, various kinds of equipment. Then there can be only one explanation. Yes, Doctor? He walked through the door. You failed to see him. <laughs> all right, just for the sake of argument, we'll say that's possible. Where could he go? He was ten miles from home. He didn't have a car. That's what he told you, but he may have had one parked. Now, why, why, why? Why would he do Perhaps that? Perhaps he felt he had to disappear. All right, once again, why? You're a missing persons detective. Why do people disappear? A variety of reasons. A situation at home or on the job becomes intolerable. Now, I checked that out. Yes? I said to myself, Joe, it's a blow to your pride, but face it like a man. Somehow, he managed to sneak past you, all right? And once you faced it? I decided to forget that Bobby Clover was my sister's husband. Even that Henrietta was my sister. So, I went back. To her house. Joe, come in. Do you have something to tell me? No. No, I'm here to find out if you have something to tell me. What do you mean? Henrietta, why would Bobby want to disappear? Well, I don't know. How were things at home here? I told you. There was very little doing at home. He was hardly ever here. Now, look, Henrietta, I want to help you, but I'm not doing you any good... Unless I ask the right questions. It wasn't going well here, was it? I told he you... He walked we... out on you, didn't No. He? he had to. He wasn't kidnapped. He wasn't murdered. The guy leaves his wife. Why? He didn't leave me. He would never leave then me. Then why isn't he here now? He's got another woman, hasn't he? Another woman? Why would he... Wa what would he do with another woman? He didn't even have time for me. All right, come on now. Tell me the truth. There was no other woman. Is that your pride talking? How could there be another woman? All day he's working. All night he's at the bowling alley. Maybe a wife has to hold still for that, but a girlfriend wouldn't tolerate it. Henrietta, I want to help you. Then don't ask stupid questions. A woman knows she consents when her husband's got someone on the string. I'd stake my life on it. He had the bowling. That was his other woman. <sighs> okay. Okay. If it isn't love, it has to be money. Money? Yeah, sometimes a man gets into debt. Not Bobby. Over his head, he can't see a way out. Bobby had no money troubles. He has all the money he needs. He gives me all I want. I'll even show you the bank books. He didn't behave like a man who was pressed for money. Oh, maybe we're not talking about the same kind of money, Henrietta. Now, Bobby has access to uh, a lot of cash at the office. What are you trying to say? Maybe he was tempted. Joe, you're talking about my husband. What if he's in so deeply? Never. What are you trying to do to me? I'm trying to find Bobby. Oh, 
are Mr. Clover's accounts in order? Yes, Mrs. Soames, that's what I asked you. And why would you think that they might not be in order? Well, you could answer that question with one word. Yes or no. The answer, Lieutenant, is yes. They are in perfect order. And now, sir, I trust that since that question was the object of your visit, there is nothing else... But have you answered the question, Mrs. Soames? Please explain yourself. A trusted employee of a brokerage firm appropriates a sum of money. The theft is discovered or about to be discovered, so that person leaves. Are you implying... I I haven't finished. His employers are in a dilemma. If they report it to the police, if they prosecute, the thing becomes public. Unfortunately, that harms their image and hurts their reputation and could cost them more in the long run than the money they're out of pocket. So they bite the bullet and eat the loss. Is that what happened here? Mr. Clover's accounts were in perfect order. Now, Mr. Soames, I'm not saying Bobby Clover ran away from here because of money, but if he did, and if you're letting him get away with it, what you're doing is telling all your other employees that the cash box is open. Mr. Clover's accounts were in perfect order, and we have no idea why he should have disappeared. And now, sir, if you will be kind enough to excuse me. Do you believe her? Yes, I believe her. Very well, then we may assume there was no irregularity at the office. Did you believe his wife when she claimed there was no other woman? Yes. Then at this point... You're a city detective on a routine investigation. You're having problems. And that's to be expected. Why do you think you need a psychiatrist? Do you remember I told you I know where Bobby is? Yes. And I'm waiting for you to get to it. It's crazy. Where is he? I, uh, I started at the beginning. I asked myself, what really happened... I got to the bowling alley just as they were closing. That's what I told you, right? Yes. And there were three of us in the place. Me, Bobby, and the manager, Fred. I remember. And Bobby says, go out and start the car. All I have to do is change my shoes and pay the bill, okay? Very well. So I go out and sit in the car and wait. And finally, the manager, Fred, he comes out and starts to lock the place up. Now, so far, this is it. You agree? So far. So we go back in. No Bobby anywhere inside. And no way for him to get out without my seeing him. And most important, no reason for him to even want to sneak out. Do you follow this? I think so. All right. There can only be one answer. And what's that? He's still in there. But we've established beyond the shadow of a doubt that there's no place where he could be inside that bowling alley. You know, it's funny. You should have used that word. What word? Shadow. And why did you say that? Why did you just say the word shadow? Why do you make an issue of it? Because I've been given to understand that no word is ever used idly. Subconsciously, every word we say, even the most offhanded remark, is deliberate. And what does this have to do with the fact that I happen to use the word shadow? Because I know now that maybe shadow is what this whole thing is about. Shadow? Did you also figure it out? Figure out what, Lieutenant? Now maybe maybe you're not aware of it. Suppose you tell me what I'm supposed to have figured out. Well, since the answer has to be in that bowling alley, I went back there about 2 a.m. And Fred, the manager, is about to close up. So I say to him, Fred? Yeah? Is it okay if I look around? I'm closing up. Can you come back tomorrow? No, I want to be here when the place is empty. I promised the wife I'd come right home. Look, um, I can give you a spare key. All you got to do is turn the lock as you leave, huh? I walk inside. I sit down on one of the benches behind the alleys. The empty lanes look just like a part of some huge underground cavern with tiny lights twinkling in the ceiling. And then, I hear it. Someone is bowling. But where? Who? And then I see him. He's standing right in front of me. He's about to bowl again. Bobby! 
Hey, Bobby. Don't do that, Joe. Don't ever do that again. Yeah, but Bobby. You can't do that to a man when he's about to bowl. You can't yell and break his concentration. Uh, listen, Bobby. No, you listen, Joe. Look at what you made me do. I hit the head pin too fast, and now I got a split. I got a 7-10 split. Okay, okay, Bobby. I'm sorry. Well, you should be. Bobby. Bobby, are you... Are you real? What do you mean, am I real? That, that night, that night, what happened? Wait a minute. I got something more important to do. Oh. Too much outside spin, so she goes into the gutter. I gotta work on that, Joe. Hey, Terry, we're down by two. It can cost us a match. Bobby, Bobby. Bobby, who are you talking to? Oh, a guy by the name of Terry. He's my partner tonight. We're bowling against two guys who are really great. Bobby, listen to me. The truth is, I'm even better than either of those two guys. But Terry's a little weak, you know? I'd give anything for a new partner. Uh, wait a minute. Hey, Joe? Hmm? Is that why you're here? What are you saying? Is it what you wanted? More than anything in the world? No, 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 no. I'm just... I'm just here because I'm looking for you. That means... Y you can leave, huh? I guess so. Are you sure? Could you just... Get up from that bench and... Walk to the door? Uh, could you? T try it. Sure. Look. I can do it. Oh... Do you mean you can't? No. I can't. Why not, Bobby? Because maybe I really don't want to. We seem to have a rather strange bowling alley here. Or maybe it's only strange because it's closed for the night. Maybe all bowling alleys are strange when they're closed for the night. Which should open up a whole new line of conjecture. What happens on golf courses, in ballparks, concert halls, and theaters when they're closed for the night and, theoretically, empty? Well, we can't close until we bring you Act Three. And we shall shortly. the land to which our ship must go. Far ahead, far ahead, that's all we ever know. Whither are we drifting? Where are we bound? There is a place of heart's desire. Call it paradise, call it heaven, and perhaps some of us will make it there. Evidently, a gentleman named Bobby Clover has already arrived. Bobby, what happened? Wait, I have to roll. That you put us back in the lead. You know, that partner of mine's a lot of dead wood to carry Bobby, around. Bobby, Bobby, wait a minute now. You say you have a partner? And he's bowling in number seven right next to us. Well, I don't see him. I, I don't hear him. You don't? Well, I see you. I hear you. I hear your ball when it rolls down the alley, but that's all. That's all? This place is so crowded, so noisy, I can hardly hear myself think. Now, Bobby, what's going on? What's going on? With what? With everything. I, re I remember the last time I saw you, just before the guy closed up for the night. You know, Fred? Fred? Fred. Fred, the manager. I don't know any Fred. I guess I lost him. You lost him? Oh, you start losing people from the other place. What What other place, Bobby? The other place where you used to be. They, they start dropping out of your mind. I guess the more unimportant people fall away first. Are you... Do you remember me, though? Oh, you? Joe? Oh, sure. Yeah, and, uh... Henrietta? Henrietta. Yeah, well, I'll remember her longest of all. That sounds as if you're going to forget her. After a while. After a while, you... have to forget everybody. Hey, Bobby, Bobby, wait a minute. Am I dreaming? What's happening? I don't know if you'll be able to understand it, but... You remember that night you came here and wanted to talk to me? Yeah. I was bowling, right? Right. And we talked about it. I said to you... This is what I live for. Yeah, I remember. And I said, what I really want, I could never have. And you asked, why not? And I answered, I, I said, 
I just want to spend the rest of my life bowling. Just bowling. Yeah. Yeah, so? So I meant it. Did you ever get to say anything that just expressed everything that mattered to you? It's like you reduced your whole life to one complete statement. Did you? No. I did. And no sooner had I done it when I felt something happen inside me. Like what? It was like a sudden warm current that runs through your blood. <laughs> Maybe I kind of blacked out for a minute, but then suddenly I was bowling again. Here. Right here. And I've been bowling ever since. Bobby, I I'm going to ask you what might sound like a crazy question. Are you dead? Well, to tell you the truth, Joe, I don't know. All I know is I'm doing what I always wanted to do. Bowl. You don't want to go home to Henrietta? Henrietta? Your wife. Oh, I know she's my wife, but I can't make her happy. Bobby, she loves you. She misses you. After a while, she'll forget me, and it'll be for the best. But you had a great job. You could go places. A job? Did I have a job? Now, you know you had a job. Yeah, I guess I did. I... <laughs> I, I'm forgetting. Help me remember. Do, do you remember you worked for Morley and Soames? Oh, yeah. yeah right. Millicent Soames. Yeah, she took it over when her husband died. <laughs> Frosty dame, too. Well, when I first came there... Something bothered me. You see, we have some old dead files nobody ever looks through. And by mistake, I guess I put an envelope with $40,000 worth of bearer bonds in those dead files. $40,000? I was afraid that old lady Soames would think I stole them. I wanted to come back and tell her, but it was too late. Why? Why do you say it's too late? Everything fades away except what you really want to do. How, how does it happen? I'm able to see you, Bobby, and hear you. How was I able to find you? Because, well, I guess you wanted to find me more than anything else in the whole world. After all, you love your sister and you want her to be happy, but the only way you can make her happy is to tell her to forget me. Now, listen, Bobby. And you forget me, too. Goodbye, Joe. No, Bob, Bobby. Bobby? Bobby, where are you? Where did you go? And then? He was gone, Doctor. I see. What? What, what do you see? You told me a story that consists of several separate, distinct elements. First, you went to see your brother-in-law at your sister's urging. Yeah, that's true. Second, you met him late at night at a bowling alley. Talked to him. Fred, the managers told us you were there. You mean you've been checking my story? Now, bear with me, please. From here on, every element rests on your own say-so. You say you'd arranged to wait outside in your car for your brother-in-law. Yes, that's true. You say you waited and waited and he never came out of the bowling alley. He never did. Perhaps. Perhaps. Let me tell you what could have happened. He was going to pay Fred, but Fred had to go into the office. Instead of waiting for Fred to return, Bobby decided to leave. He walked out... And got into your car. Now, wait a minute. You haven't been listening. He never came out of that place. That is what you say. Suppose he did. Suppose he did get into your car. And suppose you killed him. Okay. Why? Why would I want to kill him? Because you love your sister more than anyone or anything else in the world. And that's why I would kill the man she's crazy about? Yes, because he was not going to be good enough for her. He didn't love her, or at least not as much as she loved him. 
After a while, he would have broken her heart, destroyed her. Well? Therefore, I killed Bobby. And when Fred, the manager, began to lock up, you pretended that Bobby hadn't come out yet. Thus, you set in motion the entire charade that has been going on for almost a month. And this is what you infer from what I've been telling you? Yes. Well, it isn't so. I've stated the truth. I'm sure that by now you believe it is the truth. Have you reported any of this to my superior officers? No. Do you intend to? I have a clear-cut duty. You intend to accuse me of murder? I think you have told me a story which points very strongly in that direction. Well, suppose you're wrong. What happens to my reputation? Now, Doctor, I've been watching you while I was talking about how Bobby Clover was bowling. And you have the same look in your eyes he has in his. I think you're just as hooked as he is. What does this have to do I with... I do what think I'm crazy. That is an extremely dangerous and misleading word. I think you're not quite... Sane. Oh, yeah? Why? Consider. Your basic premise. Bobby Clover expresses a desire to spend the rest of his life bowling. Therefore, suddenly, somehow, he's transplanted or transmuted into another world where he may indulge this passion forever. And that is why I'm nuts, huh? That's another unfortunate word. Yeah, but it tells a story. You know, I learned something from Bobby. You didn't. And what was that? I knew how badly I wanted to find him, and I realized how badly he wanted to just bowl for the rest of his life. So I learned that if you want something badly enough, you get it. Oh, if that were true, there would be no frustration in the world. Well, wanting it badly means wanting it completely. It's the kind of want that exists in very few people. It's just too strong, too overpowering. Is that how you feel about bowling, Doctor? I said before I could see it in your eyes. It's... My weakness? Yes. I love to bowl. I, I can lose myself. Are you in game it. for a test? What sort of test? Let's go down to the bowling alley tonight. Oh? Why? I'll tell you when we get there. Hey there, Lieutenant. Hello, Fred. I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Underhill. Dr. Fred, the manager. How do you do? Hey, Doc. How are you? Uh, the doctor would like to bowl a few frames. Go right ahead. Hey, those are some shoes. And that ball. Doc, are you one of the pros on the tour? I wish I were. Oh, uh, you're on number seven. Best lane in the house. Thank you. Uh, beautiful, Doctor. Thank you. You know something? You're beautiful, too. Probably. Well, that's a funny way to accept a compliment. But it's true. You know, I never noticed it before. You are beautiful. Yes, when I bowl. You know, I looked at you before. This is a kind of quiet, pale... Nondescript middle-aged oh, lady. No, no, no. I wouldn't say middle-aged exactly, but now, here, your eyes are sparkling, your cheeks are bright, you kind of... Vibrate with excitement. Now I'm living. When I'm doing this, uh, I don't know what this game does to me, but it's the only time I'm completely alive. Don't, don't, don't say anymore. I go through the motions of a job and a career. Now stop. I do what I do to get paid. I even do it well. Now stop, but stop right I... now. Stop unless you want to do it forever. But this is all I want. No, it isn't. It isn't. Believe me. I live to do this, to aim the ball, approach the line, swing and release and down the lane. Just this. Oh, no. If I could only spend the rest of my life doing this. A doctor. <gasps> hey, Lieutenant. How's it going? Hey. Where, where's the doctor? Uh, the doctor? Yeah. What happened to the doctor? Oh, uh, I, I guess she left. Well, didn't she come in here with you? Yeah, yeah, but that, uh, that doesn't mean she was going to leave here with me. Oh, oh, I get it. Well, you know how dames are. 
You win some, you lose some. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, Fred. Yeah. Good night, Lieutenant. Missing persons, Lieutenant Mulvaney. Oh, yes, Inspector. Who? The police department psychiatrist. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm taking it time. Martha Underhill. Age 46. Uh-huh. There's missing... Yeah, yeah, I'm getting it. You say her... Hobby was bowling. Well, we'll certainly check all the alleys. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, you can depend on me to make a most thorough and intensive search. And because he's a most conscientious detective, we know he did. But where she had gone, there was no following her. Only a comparatively few dedicated people could arrive at the place, and then they couldn't get back. Well, we hope she teamed up with Bobby Clover, who certainly needed a new partner. I'll be back shortly. Is it possible that a person whose entire being can focus and concentrate on a desired result can actually harness a unique cosmic force and simply make it happen? Whether or not you approve of or even believe in it, the fact remains that millions of people devoutly do. On the other hand, Lieutenant Mulvaney might have murdered his brother-in-law and then discovered that he would also have to kill the doctor to cover his tracks. Which version is true? It's not for us to say. Our job is to provide you with choices, options, and food for thought. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Marion Seldes, Catherine Byers, and Bob Caliban. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.